Actually, there's a little bit of Troon Wolf Call stuff after this. Um, for instance, Tommy Tudor is back. I did a whole stream on Tommy Tudor a very, very long time ago. One of the only streams I've ever done where I've had a guest appearance because of the two other admins that were around the Kiwi Farms at the time, Yawning Sneasel and Mspex, uh, helped me out with the deep lore of Tommy Tudor. It's so long, so sophisticated. It's really impossible to sit down and actually try to figure out what the fuck happened. I did. I did talk to him. You're right. I've spoken to Tommy. Um, he's back. He's been gone for a long time. And as it turns out, he's been in, um, held against his will in a psychiatric facility. I think he troubled the police enough where they put him into some kind of treatment place. And now he's out. And he gets to blight the world with his presence. And so the one thing that he decided to do is he would go onto a website called Nextdoor and start with unhinged fucking ranting. Now, I should warn you, um, I'm, I've been told that this is funny, but I've not actually pre-checked it. So I'm going to kind of skip around. Um, it says, anyone here who lives in the neighborhood familiar with South Tucson city plans for development of the El Peso and Southwestern Greenway? My company, Real Things International, is contemplating a request for eminent domain on behalf of my group. Um, so his Real Things International company, I think it's like an unincorporated company. It might be incorporated, but he basically just sells rocks. He wanders around the Arizona desert and tries to find shiny rocks and then sells them as like gemstones and crystals. And he computes in his head that they're worth like like a hundred dollars each, even though they're just like shiny rocks that he found wandering around in the desert. Um, so he's threatening to go after the city for land as a part of his imminent domain pitch for whatever reason. Um, okay. So the, the people of next door have found next door is an app. If I remember correctly, it's an app where it's kind of like a local Facebook. So you join it and you're like, Oh, I'm in this area. And then you talk to your neighbors um, so Tommy Tudor was pussing around in his next door area in Tucson. Um, and this person decided to ring the bell, Bruce Mullins. He says, so I was just posting in a thread last night. And one of the people in the thread sent me a DM within the first few messages. The person shared with me details about how they had touched a child inappropriately. It was a very confusing exchange. But when I asked if it had happened in Tucson and mentioned that I plan to go to law enforcement about it, they began threatening me. I don't know what to do about this, but my interaction with this person, I felt was very important to let people in the neighborhood know, uh, keep your kids safe. So if you never watched that stream with Tommy Tudor, one of the biggest things of contention in his long, long history, because he's like 70, he's been around for a while, is that when he was in his 20s um, and was like a super hippie traveling around and trying to fuck hippie chicks, he encountered a girl who I be this number has changed a lot, but it's it was always between like 9 and 16. And the way he's described it variously was that she was a certain age and had been sexually active since she was nine years old. That part's already, already always consistent. Um, I'll actually read his message because this is the this is the part that jumped out. Uh, Tommy says the minor was fully mature was a fully mature young woman who had been making her own decisions about who she was going to sleep with since she was nine. Brilliant girl who got up out of the street, graduated college, married, had kids, and is a grandmother now. She invited me into the bed with my partner of the moment when I walked in the door. It was 1982. I was 28. She was almost 16, and the other woman was 25. What would you have done? So in Tommy's mind, this is a no-brainer. Like, come on, bro. When a 15-year-old is inviting you to have sex with her in a, in a threesome, nonetheless, what would you do, bro? And in his mind, it's just like he instinctively expects that everyone's like, boy, 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 obviously I would have sex with this 15-year-old. I can't hold you to a different standard because I myself would do that. Uh, which just shows what a fucking retard he is. I don't know. It was the... <laughs> It was the 70s. It's kind of shocking when you look into, like, the history of, like, the U.S.'s child pornography laws and you realize that, like, in the 1960s and 70s, there was just this scourge of fucking pedophiles openly making child pornography and, like, they were selling it in gas stations and shit. You had Playboy covers with, like, 15, 14-year-olds naked on the front of it and we were just selling it in the stores. It was even worse in Europe. It took a while for the law to catch up with shit like that. Um, not to excuse him or anything. I'm just saying that it was a 
people people take for granted that we've always had protections against things like that. Uh, you're you may retract your. Oh, the, he also he threatened me. He wrote a big ass fucking pose. Should I just read that? Yeah, it's short. I'll read that. Uh, you may retract your opinion of me or not, sir. It has been reported as public shaming. Bruce says, "Who are you?" Tommy says, "I'm your neighbor who lives behind the church. The gray jeep is mine. Where do you live?" Um. The Thomas Wasserberg character is a CIA asset who stalks me, impersonates me, and does everything he can to make it appear that I'm an insane sexual predator and grifter. Anytime anyone searches my name, it's a long story. Come on by and I'll show you around. Um, and then he randomly says that he fucked a 15-year-old. Bruce says if she was almost 16, then that means that she was 15. I hope you will understand why I'm informing our neighbors about this and why I will need to send screenshots of this conversation to them. Did this happen in Tucson? If so, I need to inform law enforcement. Uh, Tommy replies and says, I hope you understand that if you do anything but keep this between us, that you'll have be, you will be named in a civil rights claim of organized targeted harassment with a potential financial liability exposure that is getting filed in just a few days. It is really in your best interest to meet me in person before you do something that will get your tit in a ringer. It was over 40 years ago in Venice Beach, California. Douglas Botton says, huh, confused. <laughs> so Tommy Tudor has crash landed into a neighborhood in Tucson and immediately outed himself as someone who has had sexual encounters with 15 year olds. And is surprised that people don't take kindly to that. Uh, racism says, my boy Racism, a uh, longtime fan. Uh, says, oh, Tommy is back. Can we play Careless Whisper yet? Um, it, it, Tommy, very interestingly, if you missed the stream, uh, he's a musician. He plays, uh, he's a busker even. He goes out and he plays live music. His instrument of choice is the recorder. No, I am not joking. Tommy Tudor only plays the recorder. You might think, well, does he play it well? No, he doesn't. He's very bad at it. He plays the recorder very poorly. He goes into public and he busks playing a plastic recorder in public very poorly. Um, he says, I have the sheet for it now and I can play it, but I need to work up to it before I put it in public. And I have no desire to work up to it until somebody wants to commission a recording. That's his, his line. Whenever like, if you ever talk to him about something or you're making fun of something, he says, Okay, well, you don't get to talk about my Facebook post unless you give me money. You don't get to criticize my music unless you give me money for it first. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. He always tries to, like, like hustle you for, like, 50 bucks or whatever for rights to make fun of them. Um, lately, Tom has been go uh, This is DSP's tax lawyer saying, Lately, Tom has been going on about how his business is really starting to take off thanks to his delusions and his mind being fed by multiple scammers outside the country taking his money. However, Tom doesn't have a totally legit company registered. Oh, so it wasn't registered. I knew it. Uh, so someone can decide to register an anonymous LLC in Delaware, Nevada, New Mexico, or Wyoming and use that LLC to set up, open up an LLC in Arizona under the name of a totally legit business. Uh, which is definitely fucking a logging. And I would definitely recommend you do not spend $200 to fuck with Tommy Tudor because he doesn't give a shit. You need to sue me to get cease and desist when I present this exhibit to court. You'll have to pay me damages and legal fees. Um, let's see, I signed up tonight, made a couple posts and asked Twitler a question. If any of your disinformation comes up, it will be dismissed as fan fiction generated by a gang of deep state cyber criminals, which is what the Hoffman group is. Oh my God. The Hoffman group. Nobody tell him about fucking Gabe. <laughs> He'll lose his fucking mind. Docs found for five says when you search for Tommy Tudor, KiwiFarms.net is the first thing that comes up on Google. Are we really that back? We're so fucking back. You can't even believe it. I got an email from Google Webmaster congratulating me that a hundred thousand people clicked links to KiwiFarms.st last month. <laughs> That's always fun. 